This video is going to be an in-depth discussion about artificial intelligence and its implications for the human race. I'll be discussing this in the context of a theory proposed by AI researcher Hugo de Garis, which predicts that the creation of AI may lead to a major worldwide conflict between those who want to create super intelligent machines and those who don't. Let's get to it. I make this video not to be politically provocative, but to provide a forum for discussing the coming clash between those who embrace the technological potential for the future and for those who fear it. What I hope to get people to understand by the end of this video is that it's not enough to call one group of people paranoid because they're against technology and the other naive. There are valid talking points on both sides. In the future, if you are able to modify yourself with a tiny nano chip that completely changes your capabilities and personality, that in conjunction with bioengineering would make us entirely dissimilar to the humans who walked the earth for thousands of years. This is a choice that we are all going to be faced with in the not so distant future. Do you remain a pure unmodified human or do you modify yourself to enhance your capabilities? For many people, the prospect of having a Google search engine within your own brain will seem like too good of an upgrade to pass up. Others may resist this transition passionately and violently. More on that in just a minute. Advancements in neuroscience, quantum computing, nanotechnology, and deep learning means that this type of technology is potentially only a decade away. What I'm saying is not science fiction. Just a month ago, Google announced that they have achieved what's called quantum supremacy. They created a quantum computer that performed a calculation in a few hours that would take the world's foremost supercomputer 10,000 years. This is a major breakthrough in computing that almost nobody knows about. As I expressed in a recent video about my predictions of the 2020s, major breakthroughs are on the horizon. When this new quantum hardware matures in its interfacing with cutting edge deep learning software, new practical applications are going to emerge which are going to change the world forever. Every able-bodied country and major tech corporation is racing for supremacy in the field of artificial intelligence, quantum computing, and 5G technologies because ultimately it's going to translate into total world domination. Domination of cyberspace is the arms race of the 21st century. All of the world's leaders know this. Most notably, Vladimir Putin has said that the nation that will lead the world in AI will be the ruler of the world. If you don't know what artificial intelligence is, it's pretty much everywhere nowadays. It's on your smartphone, in your personal assistance, it's in self-driving cars, it's in facial recognition, movement identification within surveillance software. It's in Google DeepMind, AlphaGo, IBM Watson, YouTube's algorithm, online shopping, advertising, control of drones, autonomous weaponry, robotics, and other military hardware. AI is everywhere. All of these examples of AI are what are referred to as narrow AI. This means that they're not truly intelligent. For example, this means that the AI from your smartphone, like Siri, is not immediately transferable to another application. It's been programmed for one specific task. So Siri, for example, is not going to be able to beat the world's best Go player. For that, you're going to need the dedicated AI system called Google's Alpha Zero. Right now, there's a race to create what's called artificial general intelligence. That is, one intelligent system that can basically do anything. The best example in pop culture to describe this would be the Skynet system in the Terminator series. And every nation and tech corporation is trying to get there as quickly and likely haphazardly as possible. Because whoever creates it first is going to have capabilities that are exponentially greater than everybody else. Now I wanted to lay that foundation for a discussion about something called the Artelict Conflict. Hugo de Garis is a well-known artificial intelligence researcher who predicted that quantum supremacy would be achieved before or around 2020. He also has a theory of how things are going to unfold in the future, and it's an interesting one. So sit back and let me tell you about it. Hugo coined the term artelect as basically another way to say artificial intelligence. It's a combination of the terms artificial and intellect. Hugo, like most singularity theorists, believes that these artelects would eventually be millions of times more intelligent than human beings. Hugo predicts that in the future there will be three main camps of people. 
those who want to build these super intelligent artilects called the Cosmists, and those who will be opposed to this technology called the Terrans. The word Terran is taken from the word Terra, like Terra Firma, which is basically Latin for of the Earth. So you have the anti-technology crowd who is of the Earth, and you have the pro-technology crowd that is of the Cosmos. There is also a third group called the Cyborgs. These people are against the creation of artificial intelligence, but are willing to merge with machines if it means enhancing their capabilities. He proposes that there's going to be a major conflict in the future that involves these three camps of people, which he believes will be one of the most brutal and long-lasting conflicts ever fought. Those who don't want AI are going to have legitimate fears that it may well destroy the human race, or make them go extinct in the manner that I just talked about. Those who do want to create artificial general intelligence, which has the potential to be astronomically more, I'm talking millions of times more intelligent than all the human beings combined on Earth. They will want to bring this out almost religiously and almost worship the AI as an omniscient deity of sorts. Now the third camp of people is the cyborgs, and these are people who want to merge with technology. These people understand the potential for AI to get out of control, and thus take the approach of, if you can't beat them, join them. A well-known cyborg might be somebody like Elon Musk, who is trying to invent a way that we can quickly interface with the digital world. Musk is building a system called Neuralink, which is someday going to give people the option to plug their brains directly into the internet. He is, however, very concerned about the creation of AI, and has been very outspoken in his criticisms of companies who are pursuing it at what he believes is a reckless pace. Google in this regard might be referred to as a cosmist because the main goal here, and I just use them as an example, there are plenty of other corporations and countries who are pursuing artificial general intelligence. They are in a race to build super intelligent systems which may even operate independent of human control. Other notable cosmists are scientists like Ray Kurzweil, a man who has an eerily accurate track record for his predictions in computer science. Another prominent cosmist is Dr. Ben Goetzel. This man is a certified genius who is at the cutting edge of artificial intelligence research. He is very optimistic about its practical applications in the world, but even he has his concerns about centralized AI getting out of control. His concern, however, is that artificial intelligence will be used unethically by those who control it. Thus he foresees a decentralized blockchain style artificial intelligence emerging. However, as we'll briefly discuss, there are some major potential negative outcomes to that scenario as well. Now the interesting aspect of Hugo de Garis' theory is that he claims it won't take place within his lifetime and that he's happy for that. That is, he doesn't think this is really gonna be full blown for at least a couple decades. This I find interesting because most apocalyptic predictions are quite ego and era centric. They tend to always fall within one's own lifespan. And in that regard, I think it makes his ideas far more plausible and worth listening to because clearly it's driven by his own life of research and computer science. There is credence given for his accurate predictions within the field so far. And it also makes it seem far less driven by his own ego. However, I want to broaden Hugo's definition of the Terrans, the people who don't want AI, and the Cosmists, the people who do, to encompass different groups of people that we see today. Now, broadly speaking, it's the age-old dialectic between left and right politics. But let's take a look at the nuance. Generally speaking, there are two camps of people in the world today. Those who want globalization and those who do not. On the side of the people who are for globalization, you have people like climate activists, transhumanists, technological optimists, generally more progressive people. These people primarily live in urban environments. These people are pro-globalization, pro-immigration. They tend to be quite secularist. They are pro-technology and its advancements in all domains, whether that be genetically modified food or injecting nanobots into your bloodstream to clean it out. Whatever the future might bring, they are optimistic about it. They also are for cultural homogenization, a universal language. They are very collectivist and they are very optimistic about the system and mankind's ability to triumph over the evil which perhaps exists within all of us. On the other hand, there's the Terrans. They are far more apprehensive about adopting these technologies. These are your libertarian types, 
conservative types, religious types, people who are more tribalistic and nationalistic, people who value the individual more than the collective. These are people who are humanist as opposed to transhumanist. By some standards, they may be called Luddites or technophobes. Often in this category, you'll find preppers, homesteaders, survivalists, off-grid enthusiasts, the Second Amendment crowd, people who are very staunchly opposed to any imposition which they perceive to be infringing upon their rights. Now, this is the broader definition of cosmist and tyrant. Now, at some point in the future, either there's going to have to be major concessions made on both sides, or there is going to be a final conflict to end all conflicts. The way Hugo de Garis describes how this is going to unfold is that it's going to be a global civil conflict as opposed to a conflict between nations. The Terrans may use asymmetrical tactics to try to thwart the creation of artificial intelligence which may alter mankind indefinitely. Think about how passionately people resist certain practices in our society today. Stem cell research, a woman's right to choose, or even cloning or alteration of the human genome. These are all very contentious issues that people go to great lengths to fight for or against. Hugo believes that debates over AI because they entail the fate of the human race are going to make these other issues look like child's play. Hugo foresees that sometime in the 2020s, people are going to start to realize how intelligent machines are becoming and that this is going to prompt widespread public debate about the ethics of artificial intelligence. He believes that certain researchers and cosmists are going to pursue artificial intelligence regardless of any public outcry against it and that there'll be an increased polarization between the Terrans and the cyborgs and cosmists. As we get closer and closer to AI, the conflict between these groups is going to escalate to the possible point of all-out full-blown global conflict. There's some great examples of how this might play out in film. In the movie Contact with Jodie Foster, aliens send humans the instructions on how to make this time portal wormhole thing, and the whole place was destroyed by somebody who is radically opposed from a religious perspective against this technology. This is a great example of a Terran sabotaging the plans of a cosmist. Right now, the momentum around the world is with the cosmists. The momentum is towards a globalized world in which technology permeates every aspect of our lives. Only in the case of AI, the Terrans may have far more legitimate reasons to be concerned. There's also another example of this in the movie Transcendence in which a Terran who is staunchly opposed to the creation of AI terminates one of the lead researchers in the field. In the movie, this coincidentally expedites the creation of AI. It's an interesting film, if only for its cultural implications. There are many people on the Terran side who may use these ruthless asymmetrical tactics. And I think we're already seeing that around the world. He believes that the Terrans will be put in a predicament in that if they don't commit to a first strike strategy, then AI will be created and all will be lost. He believes this will lead to a massive witch hunt on the part of the Terrans in an attempt to prevent this research from progressing. The Cosmos and Cyborgs will anticipate this and take their own proactive measures, and thus will begin the Artelect War. So when Hugo talks about Terrans versus Cosmists, we need to broaden the definition of what he's saying here. He's really talking about tribalists versus globalists. Now, like I said, the goal of this mental exercise is to provide an objective substrate for people to engage in civil dialogue about this issue. It's not for me to take sides. But I am of the belief that if this conflict is to break out, the different factions of people that are going to be fighting over this issue are just going to be extensions of the age-old dialectic between globalist and tribalist. It's not only the issue of artificial intelligence that's coming to a boiling point. All the other talking points that I mentioned are ramping up to reach a critical mass in the next decade. Now, there may be a way out of this with blockchain technology and more decentralized methods of storing people's data. But one of the primary concerns with decentralized artificial intelligence, that is, pairing AI deep learning with blockchain technology is that while you have an AI which is not being controlled and wielded by any individual corporation or nation, you've also essentially created an unkillable AI because it essentially would be everywhere. Once again, the movie Transcendence illustrates this concept very well. 
It's a classic example of a decentralized artificial intelligence and also illustrates the conflict between the Terrans and the Cosmos quite well. Now, I'm not saying that it's destined to be bad, nor do I think that we should tune in, turn on, and drop out of society. I personally love technology, but I consider myself a realist on these issues. I'm just trying to get some acknowledgement from the hardline optimists that there is a credible threat of this all going sideways someday. And I'm not the only one who feels this way. Countless intellectuals and entrepreneurs in big tech, they've been very vocal about the threats that I'm talking about today. Now, about eight months ago, I did a poll and I asked, in the next 10 years, if crap doesn't hit the fan, which best describes your views on artificial intelligence? The options were the following. Build artificial intelligence and create gods. 6% agreed with that. Give me a brain chip, make me a cyborg. 7% wanted that. No AI, no cyborg, I'll stick with wearables. That was 26%. I'm going off grid with internet access was 40%. And I'm joining the Amish is 21%. Now, obviously 21% of people are not serious about wanting to join the Amish. But I think it's pretty clear based on this survey that my population of subscribers at least lean towards the Terran aspect of things. Now, we can't extrapolate these results through society as a whole. I'm guessing that if you did this same poll with the average person, the results are going to be much different. So I'm going to make another poll in the top right corner that you can partake in. And please leave your thoughts about this matter in the comment section below. The only thing I ask is that we treat each other and their opinions with respect, even if they are diametrically opposed to our own, because that is one of the great things about the society we live in. And that's a right that all of us should want to maintain. Thanks for watching Canadian Prepper Out. The best way to support this channel is to support yourself by gearing up at CanadianPreparedness.com. Your one-stop shop for premium, high-quality, brand-name products that have been tried and tested by myself and other YouTube gear reviewers. My subscribers save 10% off by using the coupon code SURVIVALPREPPER. All one word in all caps. Have a Merry Christmas, enjoy the time you have with your family, but stay ready.